Coming up on Mountain News this morning, domestic violence is a plague everywhere, but some officials in the Commonwealth say preventing it can be a community issue. And Commonwealth teachers work together over the weekend to help prepare the future of Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. We're coming up on 6 a.m. on Monday, February 5th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. And it's going to be a beautiful forecast to check out. Most of the week going to be dry. Let's get you out the door outside our studios here at WYMT. Again, 37. Just a few clouds from Hazard Point South over the last couple of hours. A gorgeous week of weather ahead. Average high again, about 46. We're going to run above that most of the week. In fact, all of the week. Earliest chance of rain right now, not in the cards, until Friday. Temperature-wise, we're in the 30s right now across eastern and southern portions of Kentucky. Minus a few spots, namely Manchester and Middlesbrough. Uh, we've actually dropped below 40 now at Jackson. This system here continues to depart. The only difference between today versus tomorrow, that system helping to try to draw in some slightly cooler air. In the meantime, here's the forecast as we head through today. Nothing but a good deal of sunshine and we'll forecast not 57. We'll go for 55 and hazard today. All right, a special hello to somebody in Letcher County. Yeah, another Facebook request. And of course, we're going to talk about this beautiful stretch of weather as well. Your first alert seven day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. Domestic violence shelter Greenhouse 17 says they want to stress the importance of prevention and awareness. More than 45% of women in Kentucky have experienced domestic violence. That's according to Governor Bashir's statewide data report. Diane Fleet, associate director of Greenhouse 17, says knowing the signs is the responsibility of the community. There needs to be more affordable housing. Um, we need more employers to kind of step up and help with that. We need more people to be aware of those signs, um, at, whether, again, that that's through their church or their community or their neighborhoods. While calls of domestic violence haven't gone down, Fleet says she has seen some positive trends in the past year. Safe students, empowered educators. That's the goal and also the title of a conference hosted at UK Saturday. As Samantha Valentino shows us, teachers from across the Commonwealth came together to learn from one another. What can we do now to make sure that we are not stepping, to, stepping across that line, but still making sure our students know what happened in the history? I, I think it, that's the challenge. I mean, that's really the challenge. At the Safe Students Empowered Educators Conference, there were many conversations about how recent Kentucky legislation has affected teacher speech. Teachers are particularly kind of under attack. The conference is focused on dismantling hate and violence in Kentucky schools. We know that kids in Kentucky are being harmed by hate and violence in their schools. She says there's also an increasing number of political debates about what can and can't happen in schools, specifically when it comes to sexual orientation, gender identity, racism, and race. Even what kids can read is being questioned by the legislature. A lot of the hullabaloo, if you will, around book bans has to do with the fact that there are so many adults who have forgotten what it was like to be young. But none of it is actually helpful to the people who are young now. Nick Stone is the New York Times bestselling author of one of America's most banned books, Dear Martin. It's about a 17-year-old African-American boy who experiences racial profiling and begins writing letters to the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's really all about him trying to figure out his place in the world. And I think that when it comes to young people, that's really what they're all trying to do. Stone has spent a lot of time visiting schools and connecting with her young audience. It's always such a gift to me um, to be able to, to converse with them and to hear what's on their minds and to just kind of validate them in their experiences. That's why she was invited to share the lessons she's learned with Kentucky's educators. I'm going to require you all to step outside of your typical way of thinking. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. 
Back in October, we introduced you to Wayne and Teresa Stacy, a Franklin County couple living in a home without heating or air. Every day since then, carpenters, electricians, and even vocational students have showed up to help, all free of charge. And after a few months, all of their hard work came to life as the Stacys saw their home for the first time on Saturday. I didn't have words. I mean, all I could do was cry. There are a lot of people out there that have been harder in harder situations than ours, and uh, I'm so very grateful for it. Humbling gratitude is all I can it's all I can describe it as. The couple says they are excited to see this next chapter unfold. Nearly two months after the annual Shop with a Trooper event, Kentucky State Police received a special donation to get them ready for this year's charitable shopping spree. WYMT's Jack Demler has more from Letcher County. An organization centered around giving back to those who serve. We contribute to uh, disabled veterans, uh, fire departments, uh, stuff like that. Through donations. We always donate. So uh, we make up Christmas baskets, uh, toys, and everything like that. Is helping the Kentucky State Police prepare for an annual tradition. We voted on where to, how to distribute the money. And we decided on this year that we would give it to the shop with cops down half. The American Legion Post 66 in Jenkins donated $1,500 towards Shop with a Cop, a donation that was helped by other organizations like the Sons of the American Legion. And they donated uh, something like, uh, I believe, 400 some dollars. They contribute to it. Along with donating to Shop with a Cop, Wyatt says they have permission to take donations for the Veterans of Hazard. A veteran himself, Wyatt says it's important to find ways to give back to those who served. I, I, I love my veterans. Uh, people don't know what they've contributed to this company over the years. And uh, people need to think about that. If they are any way that they can help a veteran, they need to try, even if it's uh, $5. In Jenkins, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Wyatt says while they don't know how much they are going to contribute to the veterans in Hazard, he hopes it's the same amount they were able to give to KSP. With many displays inside of the Big Sandy Heritage Center, it is easy to overlook some lesser known figures of change. But with this month comes a reminder of the impact of black Appalachians. WYMD's Buddy Forbes shares some of their stories. The history of the Big Sandy. We, we think it might be iffy right, right there. Is highlighted with black stories. Both of her parents were slaves before the Civil War. And so from an early age, she uh, exhibited a very good talent for writing and especially poetry. So her first publications were local papers, and she ended up going all the way to Harper's. From accomplished wordsmiths like poet Effie Waller-Smith to barrier-breaking black men like Dr. Alexander Boston. And Doc Boston. He says his first Pike dentist in Pike County. Who brought a desegregated 50-bed hospital to Pike County more than 10 years before it was a nationwide movement. It gives people a, a different idea of what's possible when you first see that. If you think about the time period when that happened, a lot of folks would have said, well, you, there can't be uh, a black doctor or a black dentist. And when folks actually went ahead and did it, it showed them that indeed there could be. Keeping those stories and others like them alive is part of the Big Sandy Heritage Center and Museum's mission. And so it might not be the first thing you think of if you think of the Big Sandy region, but as our exhibits can clearly show you that it is part of our past. And so I think it's important for young folks and the next generation to know where they come from and who they are. To keep the past on display. And it encouraged, I think, the next generation and inspired a lot of young folks to believe that what they thought was possible wasn't necessarily true and that they could actually do things like that. Showing how it is all stitched together for a better tomorrow. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News.
Belcher says public support keeps the stories alive. So you can visit the museum on the fourth floor of the Pike County Detention Center to see them for yourself. You can find the hours over on our website. Super Bowl 58's kickoff is just a little more than a week away, and there's lots of excitement for the Super Bowl featuring the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. In Lexington, Red Mile Gaming says they're preparing for an increase in people coming to place bets on the game. Sports betting in Kentucky began on the opening night of the NFL season. Gabe Pruitt with Red Mile Gaming says he's seen a new era of people come through their doors since the legalization. We get a, a, a large demographic and it's really a different one than we see sometimes with the historical racing machines or, or racing. You know, it's brought uh, you know, tremendously different demographic, I think, overall. It trends a little younger, I think, on the sports wagering side than, than what we've seen sometimes in, in other avenues. Uh, but I think, you know, top to bottom is just a very diverse group. Red Mile Gaming is hosting a Super Bowl party that will include a pig roast and will even have signed memorabilia as prizes for some in attendance. You can watch Super Bowl 58 right here on WYMT.com. And again, Monday to you, temperature-wise, not too bad. A little bit cool. It's typical for this time of the year. Generally in the 30s, we've dropped down below 30 right now in Manchester, as well as Middlesbrough, and now out at Irvine at 29, 39, Jackson again, 37 here in Hazard. The satellite radar composite showing the clouds being pulled away from us, system departing. It's also going to pull in some slightly cooler air, so the difference between today and tomorrow is about three or four degrees in the downward direction, but don't worry, things will go back up Wednesday and Thursday. Your planner for your Monday does not get any better than this for uh, this time of the year. Nothing but a lot of sunshine and a forecast high into the mid 50s. Beyond tomorrow, flirting with 60, your first alert seven day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. Thank you, Tim, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, lawmakers reveal bipartisan plans to fix the nation's southern border, but not everyone is sure it will make it through the House. They say the measure of who we are is what we do with what we have, but for us, it's who we have. At ARH, we are a family of committed healthcare professionals. Our strength is our commitment to collaboration across our healthcare system that values our employees. ARH is honored to be recognized as one of Forbes' best places to work for 2023. We are a community of people who want the best for you. Our story is your story. We are Appalachia. We are ARH. Hello, I'm Dr. Paula Jones. I would like to welcome all my former patients to come see me at the new Mountain Comprehensive Health Corporation Clinic at Elkhorn City. It's truly a state-of-the-art facility. I'm currently accepting new patients, and remember, the best time to see your doctor is before you need to. At MCHC in Elkhorn City, they offer x-rays, laboratory, pulmonary rehab, mammography, and ultrasounds. At Mountain Comprehensive Health Corporation, we believe in better health for a longer life. Wounded Warrior Project has been with me every step of my journey. They've helped me realize it's possible to rise to the top again. It's possible to get the help I need for me and my family. It's possible to hate push-ups again. To feel understood. <laughs> to begin healing both inside and out. To feel like myself again. And now I know anything is possible. shovel and bucket of water, remember? Drown, stir, drown, feel. Then make sure it's cool. 
Where'd you learn that? Smokybear.com. Brushed up on some tips before we left. Don't want to start a wildfire, right? <laughs> Only you can prevent wildfires. Washington Media Scholars, supporting careers in media, proudly celebrating 15 years of empowering college students through scholarships, career opportunities, and industry connections. Compete for over $100,000 in scholarships and an all-expense-paid networking trip to Washington, D.C. Enhance your media skills, build your network, and launch your career. Visit mediascholars.org to learn more. Why not crank it? It doesn't hurt anyone else. But listening too long and too loud can actually damage your hearing. Now, one in five people 12 and older have some kind of hearing loss. So let's boogie and get those ears checked. Visit linkedbylovetv.org to learn more about kidney disease, transplantation, and prevention. Get the facts, get checked, and get healthy. WYMT First Alert Weather. Sponsored by ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. And a good Monday to you. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Weather-wise, <laughs> it's going to be wonderful for most of this work week. Check out our views this morning. Everybody's got pretty much a clear sky. Across eastern and southern Kentucky, a few clouds that we saw dotting the sky in the overnight period, they have departed. We'll skip the web camera. For some reason, it's not syncing up right now into the system, but at least you can see it is 36 degrees right now in Hazard. Over at Wise, it's 36 as well. It dropped down to 27 at Clintwood. Pike Bullet, 38, now down 3 at Ashland to uh, 28. More head at 37. 28 Manchester, 27 at Middlesbrough, 37 at Williamsburg, and 